Right, now I'm going to move on to something like summer fruit cake. This is very useful as a summer celebration. This is not complicated, but it looks as if it might be when you see it at the end. So the first thing I need is a round cake tin, and I've lined it with a paper case, because I haven't got enough baker glide to line this one as well. And then I'm going to take... You take five eggs and five ounces of sugar, and you whisk them. And you whisk them, and you whisk them. And if you've got one of those, <laughs> it's the best workout ever. But if you've got a gorgeous, bright green KitchenAid, you turn it on, and you go and feed the chickens. Mm -hmm. Or you go and do something completely different, and you just let it whirl and whirl and whirl. And five eggs becomes a light fluff. Mm -hmm. Can you overbeat egg whites? No, well, yes, egg whites, but not whole eggs. Oh, well, exactly. you, this is whole eggs and sugar, and that's all it is. And you whisk, and you whisk, and you whisk. And if you've got a hand beater, I once bought a very beautiful hand beater. It was bright blue, and it was made by Breville. And I thought, gosh, that looks fun. And Because normally I just have a white one. And I read the instructions, and it said, do not use in continuous use for more than three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this, with one of these, takes ten. Even making a decent set of meringues. So that didn't last. Um. The Kenwood one's fine. So I've got my thickly whisked eggs and sugar. I'm going to add a bit of vanilla. You could add pretty much any flavouring, almond, cocoa, whatever. This is really useful vanilla extract because it is proper vanilla extract and it's got seeds. So when you put some of it in a custard, it looks as if you might have opened a real vanilla pod and mm -hmm. scraped out the seeds. <laughs> but a real vanilla pod will cost you £1.50. Whereas this whole bottle is a couple of quid. I mean, do have a sniff if you want one. But it's got the seeds suspended in it. And it's very, very useful. Where did you buy it? Yeah. I bought that in Tesco's. Sainsbury's, Tesco's, anywhere. But as a general rule, if I can't buy it in Tesco's in Andover, I don't buy it. Because if I can't get it in Tesco's in Andover, you can't get it in Sainsbury's in Hereford. Or Worcester or wherever's near. Is, is that the same one as the Madagascan vanilla extract? It's about half the price. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> have a sniff, have a look. You can they do it in a little tiny tub as a paste, which is very nice, but that's very expensive. Um, don't try vanilla essence. No. You need the real extract. So I put in a teaspoon of the vanilla, and then I've got some plain flour. The only raising agent in this cake is air that I've whisked in with the um, shade. I'm now going to fold in some flour, and by putting the bowl on a cloth, it means I don't have to hold the bowl, because the cloth holds the bowl steady. And then you sift in the flour. <laughs> When I was training as a cook, you did have to sift the flour three times, just in case there was a hobnail from the miller's boot in the bottom. But modern flour is usually lump-free. So I'm not trying to get rid of lumps, I'm just trying to shake it in and get air into it. And folding it in a bit at a time. I know you can't see through the metal bowl, but I will show you in a second. Fold it together by doing it a bit at a time. If you put all the flour in at once, you might get a great sort of gathering of flour in one place. Whereas if you do it a bit at a time, you can evenly distribute it throughout the egg and sugar mixture. And you fold it together, distributing through this lovely thick mixture. This is a whisk sponge. It is fabulous. It is at this point deeply happy. <laughs> so then it goes into the tin and into the oven to bake. As always in a two oven arga, put it in your deep roasting tin with the cold clay shelf above. In a three oven, four oven arga, it goes in the baking oven. It's a sponge, it goes fairly high. When it comes out of the oven, it is extraordinary. It's puffed up above the level of the tin. It looks amazing. And 
as it cools down, it just crinkles back onto itself. And don't be disappointed, because when it's cooled down, here in true Blue Peter fashion, this is the one I made earlier, it does sink back onto itself. It sinks back to being flat. Don't panic, it is meant. So don't, you know, don't watch, because it's quite disappointing. <laughs> so once it's baked, you can freeze it at this point, but just peel the bacon glide off, and then pop it on a plate. The reason I've got one ready done is when you bake a cake, it takes almost precisely twice as long to cool down as it did to bake. So the other cakes that I've got in the oven now, you're going to eat while they're still warm, that's no problem. But this one you're going to eat cold. So I will put that in the oven in a minute. So once you've baked your cake and it's cooled down and you've either frozen it or you've not frozen it, it's time to split it. A lot of people think when they're splitting a sponge <coughs> that you keep the cake still and you put the knife straight across it. If you do that, the knife goes up and down at an interesting angle. Whereas if you put the knife into the cake and turn the cake, keeping the knife in the same place, you get a much more even cut. So, so far, fatless sponge. Slightly dull, but there we go. Into the sponge, the filling is a whole pint of double cream. <laughs> and you can't do fatness. And a packet of white chocolate. Melted as ever on the oven. I love the fact that it doesn't look melted. And I'm, the cream is not straight out of the fridge because if you stir melted chocolate into cream straight out of the fridge, the chocolate solidifies as soon as it hits the cream, and it's not very beautiful. <laughs> so the, I like to put white chocolate in this. You could put dark chocolate in it. You could put some of that salted caramel sauce in it, or all three. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put about half of that mixture over the cake and spread it out. And then I've got some strawberries that I've cut up, put in with a little bit of sugar and a little bit of elderflower cordial, which just gives it a little bit of interest. Now you spread the strawberries over the cake, you put the top on the cake, <laughs> and then you put the rest of the cream on top. So, so far, I've got sponge, cream, chocolate, strawberries, we're doing quite well, but that needs to be really, really jazzed up a bit more. So just wash the chocolate off my fingers. You can just have it at this point, or you can take some baking parchment. This is one that Lakeland do that's narrow. It's intended for lining cake tins. And you take a strip of baking parchment wide enough to go around the entire diameter of the cake. And you put it on your work surface. And then you take a bowl of dark chocolate that you have melted on the back of your agar. And you spread the dark chocolate over the paper. <laughs> This isn't difficult, it just needs a bit of a nerve. And what you do is you spread the chocolate out to the edges of the paper. If you overflow the edges of the paper, you need a child on its hands and knees to lick the work surface. And you spread the chocolate all the way out don't make it too perfect for the usual reasons. And then... Uh, gird your loins. <laughs> Once you have girded your loins, pick up the bit of baking parchment and wrap it around the cake. It looks amazing when it comes out, but 
So what you've got is baking parchment attached to chocolate wrapped around the cake. You then acquire some privacy. <laughs> <laughs> and you get rid of the chocolate from everywhere. You then put the cake with the chocolate collar around it into the fridge. And the chocolate sets. And it can go in for a minimum of half an hour or a maximum of 24 hours. Don't get that too perfect and straight, because if it's too perfect and straight, nobody would ever believe you've done it. It's got to look a little bit crumpled for the homemade effect. But that goes into the fridge. Where you, it like the the sure mm -hmm. to... you can squeeze it together. But that's all. around the edge, I mean, you don't sort of... You touch it, it just gets fingerprints. No. You don't want it too perfect. No. It needs to be crumpled. <laughs> and that goes into the fridge where it goes. You then pick up the child that you have hanging around the house, and you put the child on its hands and knees to lick the work surface. <laughs> you can wrap any cake you like in chocolate. You can wrap a meringue in chocolate. You can go and buy a Mr. Kipling and wrap him in chocolate. People will think you've made a bit of an effort. It's really, really not difficult, but the wow factor of a cake wrapped in chocolate is quite something. So once you've licked your work surface clean, the cake sits in the fridge. You can make that cake, I've done it in three tiers as a wedding cake, and just stack them up on top of each other and put a sparkler in the middle, because I'm going to fill it with fruit once it's cooked. It's been in the fridge. The chocolate is set. Together is cooked perk or washes up perk. And this is why it doesn't want to look too perfect because if it looks too perfect, nobody will believe you've done it. And then to finish it, I've got some fruit. I've got some more strawberries that I've cut into chunks. Some raspberries. But to really, really raise the stakes, I've got some blueberries. And the combination of the red and the purple will make the most beautiful colour contrast. And then just to finish it off, when you serve it, don't serve it straight from the fridge because the chocolate will crack. Take it out of the fridge for a couple of minutes and then cut it and then you can cut the chocolate perfectly. But if you're making it the centrepiece of somebody's birthday lunch, don't put it in front of them when the sun is out. Because <laughs> <laughs> the chocolate just collapses in on itself. But that is wow factor eight, effort factor about one and a half. <laughs> and it's just, that's why it wants to be slightly crinkly crumply. Because if it's too perfect, nobody will ever be.